As we've moved through the beginning of 2025, we're starting to see more and more manufacturers in their education Chromebooks specifically start to deploy these new Twin Lake Intel processors, the N150 and N250. And those numbers probably sound familiar because for a couple years now we've had the N100 and N200 and these are the follow-up chips to that original N100 that we find in devices like this, the Lenovo uh, Chromebook Flex 3i. And so we're finally getting our hands on uh, a couple devices thanks to Asus uh, with these new Twin Lake processors in it. And so we thought it a good time to put them side by side and see is it worth the upgrade. All right, so a quick word about how we're going to get into this. Uh, I'm gonna run just a few benchmarks side by side and we'll see what the numbers come out like. I do wanna say one caveat, the only device we've got with the N100 in it in the office is the Flex 3i and it's only got four gigs of RAM, whereas this uh, new device from Asus, I think this is the CM12, uh, their latest uh, uh, EDU device actually has eight gigs of RAM in it. It doesn't usually make a huge difference on benchmarks when it comes to these types of benchmarks because they're really working on processor speed, but I did want to clarify that that is the case. Um, so we should see, hopefully, some, some pretty big differences in the numbers between the two. So the benchmarks we'll run are uh, the, the new version of Octane. The original's been retired, uh, but it has been like rejuvenated by the fan base. Uh, we'll run that. Uh, we will run uh, speedometer 2.0 and 3.0. I, I feel like 3.0, especially on lower speed devices, I mean, the scores are just so low. Uh, I don't know what the difference is in the two benchmarks, but we'll run speedometer 2.0 as well. It doesn't take but another extra minute or two. And then uh, browser benches. Other big benchmark that I like using is uh, Jet. Jetstream, I think is what it's called. Um, and so we'll, we'll run that as well. It, it takes into account a little bit more of the graphic ability of these things. And so we'll just see side by side which one wins. All right, so as promised, we're gonna start up with Octane 2.0 plus. We'll begin it on both of these here. And this one runs pretty quickly. So we should see our uh, results in very little time. Okay, all finished with Octane 2.0. And you can see the single core standard Octane score you're getting a 10% bump over here, but you're getting a, I don't know, what would that be? About a 20%? No, 25% bump. Actually, a little bit more than that. My math's bad. Uh, so probably pushing almost a 30% bump in multi-core. So we'll see how that plays out across the rest of these benchmarks. But, you know, single core stuff is like, you know, single task type, th type things. So you're not going to see a huge bump in performance there. But as you're multitasking and that kind of stuff, it does look like the N150 is definitely going to put it... Uh, uh, a little bit more just brute force behind some of those multitasking tasks. Now we are on to speedometer 2.0 and you can see the warning up here basically saying, hey, go to 3.0 that supersedes this benchmark. I still feel like 2.0 is a better benchmark for lower powered devices like these. So we're gonna do that first, then we'll run 3.0. And as I begin this, I do wanna point out the fact that um, we are running these in guest mode. So there's no extensions, there's nothing to do with my personal uh, Google account or anything like that going on here. So these are uh, basically completely power washed right out of the box in guest mode so that hopefully we're comparing uh, apples to apples here. All right, and as you can see, I mean, this is not a big bump. Um, this almost feels like a rounding error. If we ran this multiple times, we might get a little bit lower here, a little bit higher there. So, I mean, we're talking single digit percentage increases with speedometer 2.0. So let's move on to speedometer 3.0. So as we get this one started, um, I will point out the fact that speedometer as a benchmark in general is the benchmark that Google basically, when they folded up Octane and said, hey, we're not gonna do this anymore. Um, it is the benchmark that they said, hey, this is this is kind of the standard benchmark for Chromebooks moving forward. So um, I would say of all of the benchmarks we're going to run here today, this is the one I would take most seriously when it comes to actual performance with web based tasks. I mean, you see it doing all sorts of stuff in the background. So it's getting a good idea of how fast these Chromebooks actually are. All right. And a very similar um, situation here where we've got three to five percent increase, not even that much here. Um, and, and I think, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I think with speedometer 3.0, I'm sure they changed quite a few things in this, but ultimately there were devices that were just pegging this thing out. So, I mean, we were 180, 190 on certain Chromebooks. And so I think they just kind of changed the, the overall spectrum of what they're testing. So obviously a low end device should be on the low end of the scale. Um, it's not like it's that different of a benchmark. I just think the, the, the metrics are a little bit different, but you're seeing a very similar score here as well uh, on speedometer 3.0. So 
there are some pretty good differences in octane, but there is not much difference uh, when it comes to speedometer. Finally, we are going to test on Jetstream 2, which is another browser bench uh, benchmark. This one is definitely um, aimed more at handling like more complex tasks, stuff like PWAs would do. So I always think it's a good one to run alongside speedometer because speedometer is more of just a brute force. Here's how fast this thing is. So let's get this one running and see what we get. All right, so as Jetstream 2 wraps up, we've got uh, 188.985 uh, on the 150 and 158.115 on the N100. And I, I feel like what we're seeing here is more complex tasks. So things that maybe take a little bit more graphic rendering, things that take a little bit more uh, in terms of doing multiple things at once, you're gonna see a little bit of a bump. So you're getting a 10, 12% bump over here. Um, and then we were seeing you know more than that with Octane. But you know ultimately when it comes down to it, um, I just don't know that I could say if a school was looking uh, that didn't need to go buy a new Chromebook, say you already have devices that have the N100 and N200 in your, uh, in your classrooms, there's no way I would say, yeah, dump those and go get this. It's not that big of a generational leap in performance. Uh, but what I will say is if you're a school that's ready to you know overhaul your fleet of Chromebooks and you have the option between an N100 and an N150, and it's not that different in price, for sure go with the N150. The, obviously the updates are gonna last a little bit longer than with the N100, and it definitely is a bit of a performance jump. It's just not a generational leap in performance, and I wasn't expecting it to be. Um, ultimately, I, I don't know that Intel was uh, ever gonna position these chips in such a way, but ultimately, um, again, if you're looking at the difference in these two and the price is the same, yeah, go for the 150, but I wouldn't stress out too much uh, about uh, keeping the N100 around for a little while if, if you've got a fleet of these Chromebooks. It's been a great processor and it's going to continue to be a great processor um, for the foreseeable future. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.